welcome to the pre-post film review. I'm John Asquith. And I'm Matthew Stevenson. So this episode we're going to be talking about the film Snowpiercer. Uh, the podcast is broken into two parts. So first you'll hear us talk about the trailer, which we recorded a few months ago. That part will be completely spoiler free, so feel free to listen to that even if you haven't seen the film. Then the second part will jump forward in time and will be us reviewing the film just after we've seen it. Now this part is going to be full of spoilers, so mm. we're giving you fair warning now because we've had some listeners write in um, who were unaware that the f- review part of the podcast would contain f- spoilers, so mm. just want to make that abundantly clear yes, that do yeah. not listen to the second part until you've seen the film, or no. if you don't care about plot spoilers. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> this chaos. A thousand people in an iron box. 18 years I've hated my train. 18 years I've waited for this moment. This is the world. The train saved humanity. The engine lasts forever. The population must always be kept in balance. I said sit down. Passengers, eternal order flows from the sacred engine. We must occupy our preordained position. I belong to the front. You belong to the tail. Know your place. Keep your place. All right. So we've just watched the trailer for the new film uh, Snowpiercer by Bong Joon Ho, mm-hmm. director of The Host. Um, mm. What did you think, John? How do you think it looks? Um, I'm not super confident in this one. Right. I think uh, the concept is really imaginative, and yep. I do you know what do you know about the concept actually? Well, it's kind it's of about hard a to train, tell. right? Yeah. I mean, it's imaginative because it just looks. It's, that it's shit diff- <laughs> different. crazy. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. Tilda Swinton and her fucked teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like all the visuals of yeah. this icy world and this train. Yeah. That, that it's post apocalyptic, right? Like yeah, it's something I to think, do with yeah. the end of the world and the, the train that's got an engine that can run forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to just how insane it's going to be. Yeah. But I don't know if it's going to be a good film. It might be fun, but I'm not sure that it's going to really be anything too memorable. I think it might just be a fun 90 minutes or however long it goes for. And, yeah, uh, right. You know, I think that it seems a bit cheesy. Uh, the CGI looks a bit CGI. Yeah, I've got that on my notes here as well. I think the CGI mm. does look a little bit dodgy. And mm. I mean... That's not necessarily the be all and end all of a film, but it no, can be distracting if, if it looks yeah, really bad. Yeah, it looks like there might be quite a bit in it. Yeah, uh, it just looks a bit silly and caricatured, mm. and mm. Uh, so I don't know. I'm excited to see it because uh, I, I like him. Well, I like really like the host. Yeah. I love the host actually. Yeah, I thought and it was so good. you know, I'm definitely down to see a film from. Um, yeah, I think him, I think I'm in the same boat. Like I think it's exciting to see a. A filmmaker, a non-English speaking filmmaker, sort of have a crack at a bigger Hollywood yeah. film with some bigger name actors in it, and obviously a bigger budget than. Though having said that, the host does look really good. Yeah, it does. Um, so I think it has the potential to be something new and different, but yeah, it's a little bit of an unknown, I guess. Mm, it's really hard to tell. Mm. Like it seems like it could be interesting on a sort of like socio-political level like there seems to be stuff going on there about like class structure and like the the have and have nots kind of thing but then it could also be a bit on the nose it seems pretty on the nose in the the trailer yeah yeah it's like really obvious stuff we're up here and you'll stay down there (laughs) yeah yeah don't you dare uprise against us oh shit you are (laughs) (laughs) that was a great Tilda Swinton (laughs) impersonation by the way Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I really don't know what I think about this one. Yeah, it's hard. I don't have a firm sort of expectation either way. Or well, I guess more, I'm worried that it will be disappointing or, or not too great. But mm. I'm still really interested at the same time, yeah. which is a good thing, you know. And I, I'd much rather see an interesting, weird failure, I guess, than another action movie that's yeah. same old, same I old. Totally agree. So, um, yeah. Do you think this trailer 
is spoilericious. Do you think it has spoilers in it? Uh, like, do you feel after yeah. watching this trailer? Do you feel like you've had things spoiled? I feel like the big spoilers in this movie are going to be action beats, right? And it doesn't give those away. Yeah. Um, it tells you the whole story of the film, but it's it seems like a pretty basic uprising, yeah, yeah. fight our way to the top. Yeah. Almost a raid esque, you know, sort of thing. Through the different carriages of the train instead of up the levels exactly, of the yeah. building. Yeah, yeah. That's true. So, I never thought of it like that. Um, that doesn't bother me that that's kind of spoiled because that's a very basic setup. Mm. Um, and I, I'm expecting some inventive sort of action set pieces. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I don't think it spoils too much. Yeah. I, I feel the same way, actually. I don't. It doesn't feel like I've had any, too much ruined for me. No. Um, how do you feel about Chris Evans? Uh, I like Chris Evans. Yeah. I haven't seen, I guess, a lot of films mm. that he's in. I don't know if he's really in that many. Apart from the apart Avengers, from, Captain America. Yeah, stuff, I, I guess. think he's good as Captain America. It's kind of a plain character. Yeah. Uh, but he he gets some nice, you know, stuff in there. I, I don't know, like. He has done He's some interesting guy. stuff. Like, I really like him in Sunshine and uh, You're right. he, Scott Pilgrim versus the yes, World. Yes. They're yes. the two high points of his career, yeah, I think. Yeah, he's really good in those. Yeah. Uh, I totally forgot he was in them. But um, yeah, Sunshine especially, mm. uh, he's really good in that. Yeah. And uh, it shows that he's got great acting chops. Yeah, that's true. So hopefully this is could be something along those lines. It's like yeah. a, a bit of a smaller budget kind of weird sci-fi mm. that... I don't know, deals with some interesting issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, fingers crossed and we'll find out. Uh, it comes out pretty soon, only in a couple of months yeah. or something. So. Don't have to wait too long. Yeah. We'll see. We will. Get there. What do you say? We take the engine and we control the world. When is the time? Soon. Disorder. We're going to the front. Open the gate. We know you well, Mr. Curtis. We've been watching you. Precisely 74% of you shall die. Hey guys, just a reminder that this review is spoilerific. Uh, we spoil straight away, so um, don't listen until you've seen the film. Okay, here we are. Matt, um... In the uh, studio carriage, yep. if you will, there of you the pre-post film review train. I see what you've done there. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to work our way up the uh, review section. <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> not even a metaphor. Um, <clears throat> we saw Snowpiercer last we night. We did. Uh, what were your overall thoughts? Uh, this is a strange one, John. Um, I am really am still wrestling with this film. Uh, I had, it was a weird experience watching it um, last night. There was moments when I was absolutely in love with it and other moments when I was sort of shaking my head in annoyance with some of the things that happened. Um, I've been thinking about it all day today and I've, I've come down on the positive, definitely. Mm. Um, I like it a lot. I think there's, there's problems that we can talk about later, particularly towards the end of the film. Uh, which seems to be a theme in these podcasts. Yeah. Um, but overall, overall, I think I I really enjoyed it. I think um, stylistically, it's kind of this crazy mess of a film that just somehow works. Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of what makes it brilliant, mm. and one of the reasons why I think I've realised that I love it. Like it's great. I, I like it. That it is so all over the shop, and that it's so unpredictable, and just weird like it was so nice to have be sitting in a cinema and not know what's going to happen next yeah yeah um what about you how did you feel uh yeah i agree as i tend to agree with <laughs> what you think but uh when i was watching it i was thinking um that for better and for worse it's just like pure creativity yeah on the on yep. the screen and it's um Bong Joon-ho's vision from the first frame to the end mm. and there doesn't seem to be any compromise that he's made and that speaks to the strengths and the weaknesses of the film yep. but I, I so appreciate 
that. And I, I appreciate the unique vision and, uh, you know, this this movie changes in tone so it's, much it's throughout. It's crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> and covers, like, all this different sort of uh, emotional sort of shifts and uh, almost, like, different genres at different times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I loved it. And, I, and, you know, it's... Those sorts of things can be big problems in other movies, but somehow this all works. You know, it's it's like um, it, it reminds me of when Mister Burns goes to the doctor <laughs> and, and all the diseases. Yeah, all it? the diseases, and it's like, you know, the doctor explains like, well, you know, you, the reason you're alive is because all these diseases somehow together are keeping you alive. <laughs> but if you if you just took one out, it would all come crumbling down. Yeah. And he's like, In- so you're saying I'm indestructible? <laughs> no, even a slight breeze could. Indestructible. <laughs> That's what this movie feels like. It's like there's all these little bits and pieces that are weird and could go yeah. wrong, and yeah. some of them do go wrong. Yeah. But overall, I was so enthralled and so happy during, like, sitting there in the cinema watching this that I can't help but love it. Yeah, I think I'm the same. And, um, Later that night, I was kind of making a little list of stuff to chat about with you, and um, the list of problems I have with the film is probably like double the list of things <laughs> that I liked about it, but it, it's exactly like what you said. There's this weird thing about the film that I love it despite many of those problems, mm. and a lot of them are admittedly sort of nitpicks and, yeah. and things, but it, it is exactly what you said. It's It's the way the film sort of succeeds despite all of this stuff. It's the craziness and the conviction it has yeah for its vision and its own unique world that yeah. just you can let that stuff slide yeah we just don't see a lot of that in genre filmmaking these days Not really uh, unless it's a very very small budget independent film uh, and then they don't tend to have the money for a, a scope like this where you can balance an artistic vision and uh, a singular uh, directorial, directorial personality and also have you know reasonably good effects and kind of Hollywood actors and, and all that yep. sort of stuff so it's rare that, that we see something uh, that balances those two things like this though it's admittedly not being treated like a blockbuster in terms of distribution especially here no. in Australia where we're it's screening in one cinema here in Melbourne yeah which um, is crazy yeah, I is. think they would make enough money off it if they gave it a, a small but wider uh, mainstream release. Yeah, definitely. It's strange, yeah. Uh, the screening we went to last night was basically sold out. Yeah, so it was crazy. That was good to see at least that it's, um, you know, doing well in that sense. Yep. I think I was a little bit worried, particularly at the very start. This It opens, I think, with some pretty clunky dialogue. I don't know specifically, but I remember thinking that it sounded a little bit cheesy, some of the stuff coming out of the characters' mouths. Um, I've never been a huge fan of that really kind of dirty, um, dilapidated future sci-fi look, and mm, it sort of so has really a bit like of that. that. Yeah, um, yeah I, I didn't have too much of a problem with it, but I wasn't in love with the first third. Um, I like It did pick up for me once Tilda Swinton came on screen, though. That she's, mm. I thought she was great. Yeah. Um, but the Jamie Bell character... And Chris Evans, I thought they they didn't immediately grab me. I thought they were okay. Yeah, um, but I would agree. Like the their characters don't uh, really become too interesting until things start yeah. to kick off. But I I loved the setting and the world within the the carriage and stuff from the get go. Yeah, and right. So <clears throat> I was expecting at that point before the the sort of comedic elements come in because it takes a little while for that stuff to happen. Yeah. I was expecting something raid-esque, you know, uh, about mm. it's it's quite dingy and dark and dirty and I thought, you know, we're setting up for a bunch of action sequences as I think we talked about in the trailer like working your way to the the front of the train. Yeah. Um uh and so yeah, I I really enjoyed that and I I liked like all the weird little barrels and little beds that they'd made and the the sketch the guy that sketches everyone like just comes down yeah. on this like police system yeah. or something and I, think, I, I really like that. Do you know what it is though? I think I think it's like a a Terry Gilliam thing. Like, a lot of people have been it, it comparing is. this yeah. to Terry Gilliam, yeah. and I have never liked Terry Gilliam films. Yeah. Um. I think it, I don't know. 
not to go on too big a tangent, but his stuff to me always seems like a bit of style over substance. Like it's too much style crammed into every single frame. And I know a lot of it's satire and it's you know it's meant to be funny, but I was a little bit worried. And this film is like that to an extent, but I think it's I don't know. It's got sort of bigger, darker themes to it that make it a little bit more palatable for me. Or maybe it's just mm. not as crazy and over the top as Terry Yeah, Bloom I don't is. think it is. Uh, but I, I think maybe that might have been where my reservation was coming from a little bit at the beginning. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I definitely was reminded of him yeah. as well. And uh, as the film goes on, it, there's less of that stuff, I think. You know, there's... I mean, it's crazy, but mm. there's less of that set designy yeah. yeah, things tipping over, the little yeah. switches and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um how did you feel about the the first big action scene, which is when after they escape, Chris Evans proves that there's no bullets in the guns and he runs through? I loved that. Uh, yeah, the thought, initial escape. You mean? Yeah, the initial escape and the yeah. build up was so tense. Yeah, I agree. I was just like, my heart was beating so fast, and uh, at that point, there had been a few funny moments and stuff, but it was still really life or death yeah. feeling. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is the whole way through, but it, it kind of changes a bit, but. Uh, I love that. I love the idea of them like getting these barrels together yeah. and that, that's how they stop the doors from closing and they have to sort of surf along the top of it to, you know, get to the front. And um, the the idea that they don't have bullets in their guns, but you're not totally sure until he yeah, pulls, pulls the trigger the on his head. Uh, was I just, did think that was a bit of an excessive way to prove that they didn't have bullets. You could have just pointed it at the roof. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of moments like <laughs> yeah, that in the movie. Yeah. Like, did you have to do it that way? <laughs> um, but, you know, dramatically, uh, that kind of works well. Yeah, definitely. Um, All right, so the, the next big thing after that, I guess, is that they uh, progress a few carriages and go and free uh, Kang Ho Song from his little prison that he was in, yeah. the, the little note that they got instructed them to do. Yeah. Um, How did you feel about that scene when they woke him up from his little sleep? Yeah, I, I really uh, loved that. Uh, his his character was was interesting because he didn't just agree to help them straight away. He was a junkie and yeah. Uh, but he also uh, wanted to save his daughter uh, along with yeah. He was know, imprisoned with him. Who was also an addict of this chronol. Yeah, good parenting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I thought he, that was a really strong introduction. Yeah, and, I agree. Um, a great another character for this ensemble that we're sort of gathering as we go along. I th- yeah, that's the perfect, another perfect example of how weird and unpredictable this film is. It's like you were saying, that sense of mystery. You think you know what's happening. They open the next door, there's nothing there, and he's in like yeah. a morgue. He's in a drawer, tray. basically. Yeah, like, like, here's, like, the, here's the next character, <laughs> in a drawer. Yeah, exactly. Asleep. Yeah, who only speaks Korean and starts fist fighting you when he takes him out. Like, it's yeah. just nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about after that, when they, I think the next carriage along or I don't think there was much in between if there was but further along the train they meet the first sort of band of militia huh? what did you think of that scene John uh, I thought that was really cool like um, the doors open and it's this cool slow motion shot of this train just full of guys with axes they look fucking scary too like yeah. the way their, their eyes are covered but just their mouths yeah yeah they were really creepy and the yeah. music at that point was kind of like this weird droning deep mm sort of freaky sound. Um, I thought they were just, like, totally screwed at that point. Yeah. Uh, Chris Evans and, and the gang. Yeah. Um, and it gets a bit unrealistic in there was, where... Yeah. They're winning to begin with, uh, which is unrealistic. <laughs> uh, but then, like, this is where those weird touches come in that it doesn't matter, you know, that, that it's a bit silly and not totally realistic yeah. for me anyway. Like... When he slips on the fish, <laughs> or even before they fight and they get that, they're holding a fish and they like oh, gut they dip it. Their blo- they all they dip their blades. Yeah, in the yeah. Blood it's of the fish. like, is that yeah. a ceremonial thing? Are you trying to just look tough or yeah. like, wh- what is this? But it, it worked still. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the first sort of big sort of issue I had with having to suspend disbelief. Mm. Um, because you were like these completely unarmed, malnu- malnourished. Yeah. People from the back of the train faced off against these armored up, weapon axe wielding, like presumably trained security guards, and they the the dudes from the back of the train had literally no weapons at all. Like yeah. they should have all died instantly in yeah. that room. Like yeah. they they had no chance in hell. 
And I was kind of thinking when that door opened, they would have to come up with some sort of creative solution. Yeah, I thought that was to like happen, sure. overcome them, but it's just nothing. They just kind of charged at each other, and you expected to believe that most of them survive. Yeah. Which, yeah. But you're right. Like it, it's one of those examples where at the time it kind of peeved me, and it and I did pull me out of the film. Mm. But you kind of just get sucked back in because it's so wacky and fun during the battle itself, and yeah. you kind of f- forget how dumb <laughs> it really is. Yeah. But there was another there was another great part of that scene, right? Was was that the same scene where they sort of went across the bridge and it was New Year? Yeah. And they all stopped fighting amazing. and yeah. they all like cheer or whatever. Yeah, they all pause fighting. That was and fucking count great. Down. I love that. Yeah, me too, yeah. Like that reminds me of that World War One story where they like stopped fighting for a day or whatever and played soccer and then went back to the trenches and shot at each other again. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah, I I love that moment. After that as well when they the, they turn all the lights off and um, they're all the, all the bad dudes put their night vision goggles on. Yeah. and um, Which the, just appear, I guess. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. That's something I didn't even think of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they go into the tunnel and wait, what is it? The daughter is like, oh, we're coming up to a tunnel. Yeah. A really fucking long one. Yeah. That, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, that's another example of how awesomely creative the action scenes were. Like suddenly it just turns into this first person sort of night vision battle yeah. scene. Yeah. What did you feel how did you feel about the daughter being um psychic? Oh yeah. yeah. You know, I had kind of forgotten about that because after those early scenes it's not really brought up again. Nope. And <laughs> I, I yeah, when so that's first introduced, I was thinking like, uh you know, that might be one thing too many. Yeah, I was... That really... Warning bells went off like crazy. When yeah, I was, I was thinking, was oh, like, I hope this doesn't develop into something. I guess it's going to because they've brought it up. <laughs> but they... You could have not had yeah, that in there. Yeah. Well, I guess the only thing it serves is it, like, builds tension twice. Like, there's yeah. that scene before the they open the door to the axe guys and she suddenly goes, don't open the doors and gets all panicked and then yeah. the doors open and they're there. Yeah. So, See, I, I thought uh, early on that she had, like, good hearing or she could, like, sense vibrations or something. Uh, So it's weird. that, And they just accept that. You know, it's just like, oh, are you psychic? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just weird. And then it's never brought up again. But Uh, it's another surreal touch that adds to this, you know, the strangeness of the of the film. Yeah, I actually I think that for me that took away from it a little bit. Like that that went a little bit too mystical for me like in and in, I I would yeah, have preferred I, the I film without that, that yeah. altogether. Even though it was so small, I'd forgotten about it almost yeah. by the end. Yeah, it, yeah, as I said, it could easily not be there yeah. and yeah. yeah arguably, I guess shouldn't have been, but um one of the th- one of the things I really loved about the film was um the way he just fucking kills characters off when mm. you least expect it. Yeah. I think that, like, for me, that that was one of the things that elevated it above the usual sort of Hollywood stuff because you just don't know who's going to live and who's going to die or what's going to happen. Like, there's the um, scene fairly early on where Chris Evans has to choose between um, pursuing Tilda Swinton or going back and saving Jamie Bell, who's got a knife to his throat. Um, that was and amazing. This kind of like extended pause where he has to try and decide which one, and he chooses Tilda Swinton, which presumably is you know choosing the the good of everyone instead of the one person that he likes. Because you know, yeah. if you have her as a hostage, that's going to be a huge bargaining chip. Yeah. And usually in a Hollywood film, there'd be mm. some way that yeah. Jamie Bell would get out, but nah. Yeah. Just stabbed dead. Yep. Yep. But I, I was so uh, happy is probably the wrong word, <laughs> but impressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really brave. Yeah, brave and choice. it's like uh, also the scene in the school when they they sort of get to the carriage with the kids, and um, like it all turns to shit. Um, after all that, when uh, Chris Evans has Tilda Swinton sort of shackled still, and he has the gun to her head, I mean, in any other normal film, despite you know him having just watched multiple of his friends get murdered, not by her but on her orders, basically, mm. Mm. you know he would have. Let her live. Yeah, he would have. He would have had the gun man. to her head, and yeah. then you know quickly pulled it yeah. away or yeah. something. But not nah, point blank. Yeah, just I'm executes off. her. Yeah, in the middle of the school. Yeah, yeah, and then and you know, again, such a, a major character who you think is going to be there sort of till the end, till the Swinton. I mean, yeah, yeah, um, just about halfway through the movie is is gone. 
Yeah, because it's even built up that way because she talks about when they get to, uh, what's his name? Wilford. Wilford. Um, that, that she wants him to kill Wilford so he can, yeah. so she can take over. Yeah. So there's this kind of implication that they're going to be... They're going to have to work yeah, together. All, all the way to the end and then there'll probably be some sort of... You then know, she'll twist. double cross them yeah, again exactly. or something. But and no. then killing her is justified yeah. at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was anyway, but, you know, that's the typical structure. Yeah. Mm. But not just kills her off. Yeah. And then uh, we're introduced to, I guess, a new villain who's the Terminator, basically. You know, well, was he, he was featured earlier on. Uh, he was, he but he, he kind of steps up as the prominent physical antagonist at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, he shoots John Hurt and then starts coming after them. Oh, that's right. They execute John Hurt yeah. and he sees it from the video feed. Yeah. I've forgotten about that. Yeah. Well, how did you feel about that guy? Like... The villain? Yeah, that mean? villain, yeah. Um, I, I had no problem with him to start with. Yeah. Like, I think you needed a tough sort of anti-hero for them to, antagonist for them to fight against. You know, you needed someone that, to hate. Mm. Um, and he was pretty intimidating. You know, he was good at shooting yeah. and fighting. Yeah. Um, but later on, when, like, because he gets, the, there's a big fight in the, uh, fight in the steam room and um, he gets choked to death by... Uh, Chris Evans. Oh no, who is it? No, Australian? it's um, Kang Ho Song. Oh, that's right. And Chris Evans stabs him in the side. Yeah. So not only does he die from being choked to death, he yeah. also gets presumably two punctured lungs. Yeah. Um, but then half an hour later, for absolutely no apparent reason, he just sits back up and yeah, walks into the final battle. Yeah, that was really weird. Which I I hated, if I'm honest, like that. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't a big fan, and and I uh, coming out of the movie last night, I was f- sort of forgiving it because I was on a bit of a high. But even now, in like this, in the post twenty four hours since the movie, it just like I loved the surreal touches, but I feel like that was just I just don't fit get at it. All. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what decision was behind that. Like why he decided to to have that character come back to life. Yeah, I don't think they needed it in any way. I feel like as the movie goes on it becomes more and more unhinged in terms of how realistic it is. Would sense? you would you agree with that? Like just I don't know if I do. The the carriages on the train just get a bit ridiculous. And I I enjoyed it and I'd say ridiculous in a good way, but it just got like to the point where you know there's a carriage where there's like a big rave going on and stuff. Yeah, and, like where do those people live? They didn't go through yeah, any yeah, living quarters, or I like, did feel is like that they the party carriage of... is that just always going on? <laughs> you know, it doesn't. I it... think so. I felt like they skipped a lot because the train is very long, and I don't think we saw every single carriage. No, but I think that would be something. Yeah, I guess I I feel like they should show. You know, yeah, yeah. no, that's a, that's a, a, a room criticism. where there's beds and. I stuff, had similar you know. problems with the train just being unbelievable. Like there's the aquarium carriage. With yeah. It's just like full of fish. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Bit. See that that's that's one of those things that worked for me though. Like just because visually it looks so oh, awesome. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. beautiful and and then they stop and have sushi there, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think like it almost becomes not a real train at at some point. You know, it's it it leaps into. It's all about the ideas and the themes now. Yeah, I see. And it's, okay, this isn't a physical thing they're going through. It's almost like, I don't know, you know, they're, they're walking through the, the writer's well, ideas. Yeah, and I mean, it's almost, it is kind of like metaphor, right? Because <clears> the <throat> yeah. further along the train they get, the more like obscene and um, excessive everything becomes. Like, you know, the final carriage before the, the actual front of the train front itself of, yeah. is just everyone like fucked out of their mind on drugs yeah. rolling around on the ground like you know these these people in first class are just you know indulging in so much stuff yeah. that it's, it's it's not meant to be taken literally I guess yeah yeah it's I think so it's meant to be over the top yeah yeah and I mean yeah you know the, the themes and stuff aren't subtle in that in that sense like it's very obvious what he's trying to say for most of the movie about class structures and and all that sort of thing so when they finally get to the the last carriage um, and there's sort of a big reveal, and you finally um, meet Wilford. Um, how did you How did you feel about that? The, the sort of ending and the way it tied up all these pretty in your face 
class themes that had been going on beforehand. I feel like uh, I was slightly disappointed by a few things at the end. Like that that's where it lost me the most. Interesting. Um, and I it, it's that thing of, you know, I imagine you you as a as a as a watcher, you've you've got this like plate which is you're you're holding like a plate like a waiter. And it's like your suspension of disbelief. And the movie's just like dropping little weights on this plate the whole time. And you're like, by the end of the movie, you're like on one leg, you know, trying to hold this, balance this plate, which has got all these, you know, different elements on it. And um, I just couldn't quite handle some of the revelations at the end. I felt like they just weren't needed. Like the there was enough there already for these character motivations. And uh, so to be specific, that before we go and see Wilford, um, Chris Evans kind of breaks down and talks about uh, why he thinks he's not a good leader and, and what happened early on uh, when everyone in, in third class or whatever got on the, the train and they were forced, there was no food, so they were forced to eat each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and while I really liked the scene technically... Um, uh, it was shot nicely. I think Chris Evans did a good job in it. Uh, I feel like there there was enough reason already for him to be pissed off and to want equality on the train. I don't. I, I felt like oh, we we all had to eat each other in the first few months was just like too much. Um, so you like you dislike the cannibalism in general? <clears throat> like this, you thought yeah. there shouldn't have been. Yeah, and I yeah, I I just think like we saw how shitly they were treated. I yeah. I don't know if if that added anything other than. Uh, you know, shock value, really. Yeah, I, I can see that argument, but I kind of loved that. I, I don't really have any other reason other than it was so unexpected. And, mm. like, when that came out of his mouth, it was this revelation to me that, holy crap, this guy that I've been rooting for this whole time is an absolute monster. Like, the shit he did, mm. if we'd seen any of that stuff, you would never want to watch another frame of film with him on it. Like, I just thought that was a great about face like I didn't see that coming at all yeah that's a, that's a good way of looking at and it and it kind of like added to the the weird unpredictability of the film for me yeah I, I can totally see where you're coming from I, I suppose yeah I don't know for some reason for me it just felt like um, cross the line yeah <laughs> yeah. I don't like cannibalism <laughs> I just don't agree with it um, no I don't mind cannibalism <laughs> as a as a you know a story idea or whatever yeah. but um yeah, I don't know. It just uh, just uh, felt like you know I was on his his side enough. But as you say, it is a good way of kind of subverting that. Yeah, I think the, it's not about. Story that's and, interesting because I don't. I didn't see it as a reason to put us on his side. I saw it as the opposite. Yeah, I saw it You're as probably a reason right, actually, yeah. to suddenly not be on his side. Yeah, which I think helped with sort of the final scenes with him and Wilford, and it it really tipped you off balance and suddenly you didn't know what was going to happen because he's not this golden boy leader that you sort of thought he was the whole time. Yeah. He was this horrible person that was eating babies and yeah. killing their mothers. Yeah. You know, a few years ago. Like, why? Of course what, of course, he's going to want to be the, the leader of the train if someone offers him that Yeah, that's option, interesting. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought of it that way. But, um, yeah. Um... And then, so, he, he talks to Wilford and Wilford reveals that John Hurt yes. was in on it the whole time. And that, that was the other thing that tipped me over, like... That's the thing that tipped me over. Suspension too. of disbelief. Yep. And is even more unnecessary than the, the cannibalism thing for me. Like, it's, yep. it's just like... Yep. Adds nothing to the movie. Yep. Totally At all. Um, and so that's why, in my mind... <laughs> He's just lying out his ass. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, because he gets warned. Uh, Chris Evans' character gets warned. Yeah, not to believe him. Cut his tongue out. Don't don't let him talk at all. And so, I feel like there's some elements there. I don't know if his proof was concrete that he was. He did know a lot of details that I think he would have need to have spoken to John Hurt to know Ah. when they're sitting at the table. The only one he knew was like. It's better to have two hands to hold a woman, right? That line of dialogue. Yeah. That's the only thing for maybe. me. Maybe. I feel like there was more than that, but maybe not. I don't, I don't know. know. It's I, just weird to, like, John Hurt, why would you 
No, I totally cut that, your that arms was my and legs off it. to yeah. serve the train. Like I, I just don't quite. I thought, I thought also it was kind of implied that there was this direct phone link that they had. Yeah, because you, were, you never saw, never saw the phone anywhere else. So I figured that there's two phones, one at the front of the train, one at the end of the train, and these two guys have been colluding the whole time yeah. to orchestrate this uprising yeah. or these previous up- uprisings. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I would totally in agreement with you. Once he revealed that that's what John Hurt was doing, and previously we just learned in the story that he'd cut his arms and legs off, not because he was tortured by Tilda Swinton, but because he wanted to save the baby that yeah. Chris Evans was going to eat. Yeah. Um. So as soon as, uh, this is such a weird conversation. Yeah. Um, but if if that is true, like it makes no sense that he would then send people to their deaths for the greater good of humanity in order to maintain equilibrium. Exactly. If a year or two ago he was cutting his arms and legs off to save people so they wouldn't have to die. Yeah. Like it, something's wrong. Either, like, he's lying, like he said, which I actually didn't even consider during the film, or it's just lazy script writing to try and shoehorn and twist in to make you feel mm. shocked. Yeah. It just... It's like the... I don't, you don't need a twist there, I feel like. You know, the... There's so much craziness going on. Yeah, already. and I think that what I really loved about the ending was just the idea that it was orchestrated by Wilford. The uprising yeah, that's is that's a twist already. Yeah, it's intentional. He <coughs> was the one sending the notes, which I kind of, I guess, was kind of a little bit predictable. You knew it was coming from somewhere sinister, I think. Yeah, but that it just makes so much sense. Like he he wouldn't want to kill all the lower ca- class off mm. because then there's no one to kill the upper class. Like you need to, you need to kill both. Yeah. So there needs to be battles, and ne- people need to die from both sides of yeah. it. It's perfect. Like you keep the yeah, keep the the spirits high of the the downtrodden third class, and then when the time's right, boost their confidence enough to inspire an uprising. Kills off a few of the mm. upper class and lower class. You're mm. back to mm. equilibrium where you can sustain. Like that's genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very logical. Yeah makes uh, a, yep. a dark cynical kind of sense yeah exactly it? and it like and it and um, he was saying like you know that that's just the way it is and the way it has to mm-hmm. be in, in order for this to work otherwise but humanity dies humanity is gone yeah. yeah and the uh, it's jumping forward a bit but then uh, the very end of the movie almost questions like well is he right you know there's a, there's a suggestion there that to keep humanity going, he was kind of right. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and, <laughs> like, and they, they get out well, and it's like, that. okay, you're out now, but... <laughs> no, yeah, now what? what? Now what? Like, <laughs> you know, er- everyone's dead and you guys are probably going to die. Was it worth it? <laughs> um, so, but then there's another, you know, there's so many plot <laughs> revelations at that point. There's yeah. the whole Willy Wonka thing of like, you, you Charlie, I'm going to choose you to oh, take over right. the train, you know? Unlimited uh, chocolate for you and <laughs> whatever, but you know it's. Um, I thought that was kind of strange. Well, I mean, strange is the wrong word. The whole movie's strange, but kind of uh, didn't quite work for me. That he was, it was like that he you, would you've, want you've to give proven power to be away. a good leader. So I'm just going to let you take over the train. Oh, that he would actually choose him to take over the train. Yeah, yeah. that's true in a literal sense like that. I guess I didn't even think about it like that. As I was watching it, though, like I, I loved that moral quandary that he was in because I was experiencing that myself as I watched it. Like, what is right? Like, yeah, oh up, yeah, right yeah. up to that point, I was so sure that what he was doing was wrong. But once he argued his case, that's literally this is the last of humanity. If we don't do this, every human is dead. Mm. I mean, that's a pretty convincing <laughs> argument. Yeah, and I love that he was put in the position where he had to decide: like, do I blow the door off the the train and destroy everyone or do I accept that this is how humanity now has to live mm. it's manipulative but it's like it's the only d- way it has to happen yep. yeah um, and is that uh, is humanity worth saving then if it's like that and yep. uh, he almost seems to agree yeah. with Wilford yeah and pushes the and then uh, <laughs> this little hatch opens in the ground <laughs> and, and yep. there's a kid in there uh, just, just working away. Replacing a cog of some kind that used to filter out shit from a pipe or something. Um, and that, that switches Chris Evans like, no, this is wrong. See, you know, and fuck I, humanity. There's no humanity <laughs> left if this is what's happening. And that I dislike that. That's why okay. that was that was a tipping point for me because yep. I was so 
impressed by the grey areas that it had brought up and so enthralled with what are they going to do there is no easy option and as soon as they opened that hatch and saw a kid it was instantly Ed Harris is the baddie that's the bad choice you have to do the other one and it was like an an easy out of that I, I mean so. not, maybe it's not as easy I'm making it sound but I yeah. think it was a, it made it more obvious that that was the wrong choice yeah to, ha- to make yeah that you should side with the others and you shouldn't be part of this yeah twisted future reality where kids clean out shit out of pipes yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it was an interesting revelation because we've been wondering where those kids are the whole movie yeah that's true um, I just thought he was a pedophile to be honest really yeah Wilford I thought it was going to go down that path yeah yeah well because there was that line earlier where he's like oh he just likes kids and I was like ooh yeah see I thought that was he eats kids <laughs> you know and because Chris Evans says babies yeah that's best. true and I thought it was going to be like oh, what's the difference between the the front and the back? Because at the front they eat babies as well, but they saute them, you know. But because uh, the movie... Wow, that would have been a weird ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the movie's so <laughs> yeah. unpredictable. No, that, I kind of like You know, he walks in there and he's idea. got the fry pan going, and I thought, <laughs> there's going to be some reveal in here, yeah. you know. But, uh, you know, it wasn't quite that dark, I guess. But, uh, I mean, it was it was confronting at first seeing the kid in the... Yeah, in amongst definitely. the gears. I was yeah. just like, oh, what... You know, that's really weird and <laughs> unsettling. Um, and then when, when Chris Evans sort of reach in, reaches in and gets his arm stuck to stop the gear to save mm. the kid, mm. um, despite not quite liking the, the whole kid thing swaying his opinion, I did like the symmetry of that and how the he arm. was, yeah, yeah, finally able to lose an arm yeah. to save a child, yeah. which is what he regretted not having been able to do earlier in the film. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so no, I think that, that payoff was good. Yeah. So that kind of made up for the, the easy out that the kids, having the kids under the floor, yeah. um, gave him as yeah. a character. So it's revealed that the reason Kang Ho Song, one of the reasons he was he was collecting the Kronol oh, yeah. Yeah. was because it is highly flammable and he wanted to make a bomb. That was a pretty good reveal, actually. I like that. That was pretty smart. Yeah. And that, that was, that sort of linked back to these moments where you saw him looking outside and and he kind of reveals that he thinks that the, it's warming outside and it's yeah. not totally dangerous to go out there anymore. You yeah. won't freeze straight away. Yeah. And then the train blows up and derails. Violently derails. And yeah. kills fucking everyone. <laughs> yeah, I Everyone the on the train yeah. dies. <laughs> yeah. All the, the poor people back in third class are just like... Yeah, all that They was thought like, nothing. oh, we've got so much more yeah, room now with the uprising's happening. <laughs> and they just get blown to smithereens. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I guess they weren't really planning that. I, I suppose they thought the door would fly off and that would be it. Or yeah, who know. knows? But it's it's a kind of a weird logic there. Um, how, what did you make of that plan and then the subsequent sort of reveal of the, who's alive? and The plan to blow the door off? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess before it happened, I thought it was smart. Yeah. Well, after it happened, I liked that that's what happened. Oh, I, me too. Yeah, I really liked that. After it happened, as it was happening, I was like... She, no one's going to survive that. If if half the carriage is still alive, I was going to be annoyed. Yeah. So I kind of liked that everyone was just dead. Yeah. Again, it's just this these weird, like, dark, twisted little things that happen in the yeah. film that you just don't expect. Yeah. They just come out of left field. Yeah. Um, and I did like that... I did find the end sort of hopeful when they came out into the snow and the, there was the little... Interesting. The girl and the little little boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked that they weren't white. That was nice. Uh, yeah. You know, it was like a good mix of like races there that was not usually what you'd see in a the finale of a big Hollywood film. Mm. Um, and I thought like definitely the implication was that they were going to have to repopulate. Like they, they're, okay. it's kind of like Adam and Eve again. Like yeah. it's back to the back to back to basics. Yeah. But having said that, I just still didn't understand why they didn't immediately freeze to death given that we were just shown at the start of the film if you stick your hand out of your train for seven minutes it freezes off yeah, I, yeah think I, think that's, I think it's weird there, like it's, there's, it's, there's a weird a inconsistency there I guess you could argue that because the train was moving mm, there's more yeah. breeze on his arm or still, something I don't think they thought about it no. I think like as I said as the movie goes on it becomes more surreal and just they stopped caring at some yeah. point uh it's interesting though that you found relative the ending relatively hopeful because I found, I found it totally quite hopeful. bleak. Really? And In dark. what sense? How how was it bleak? Well, when like the the train derails and everyone dies yeah. and there's this very I think obvious cut to make you think the film's ended. It shows a a big like almost a helicopter shot of the train crashed. Yeah. 
and it cuts to black. And I, I thought the movie was going to end there, yeah. and it was just like humanity. You've, you know, it's you've finished. done it again. You are, you idiots. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's almost a Planet of the Apes type thing. Yeah. Like you've blew it up. You, our, our need to for violence and to to do selfish things has ended us once again. Yeah. Anyway, then it it comes in and you re- reveal the kids are alive. Yeah. And and it is played, I think, to be relatively hopeful. The, the music's quite soft. There's like this little piano p- thing playing. Yeah. Um, but I, I took it as like, they're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like, I don't even know where they'd go from there, you know, to, f- to for shelter or food. Well, there's a lot or, of food in the train still. It's a bit well, wrecked. Yeah, it's I don't know. On the floor. Maybe, <laughs> I guess. But then there's a polar bear, which is meant to symbolize, yes, life is yeah. existing out yeah. here now. But it's also a polar bear, which is this carnivorous, very dangerous animal and yeah. it looks down at them and I, I don't know, I just took that as like yeah, it's that it's potentially happy for a brief moment even though they've lost everyone they knew and then, they're gonna eat by and then the world is still harsh and, and life may continue but not necessarily with people um, That's really that's, that was my first reading anyway, I'd lo- I want to see it you know, many more times and, and see how I feel but yeah, I think, I think that's a valid read- reading I just don't think I don't know, maybe I'm not giving him credit enough, but I wouldn't... I, I didn't think that he would p- specifically put a polar bear there to show that they were potentially going to get eaten or that it was dangerous. No, I, yeah. I think it's just like that's the animal that can survive the harshest of weather conditions. I think you're, you're right, you know, probably. Like, yeah. birds and stuff are probably still all dead or like hiding somewhere. That's the one animal that people know who can live out in the Arctic so it's believable that it would still be wander- walking around yeah I, I think all I took <clears throat> I think you're probably right but for me it was ambiguous enough that I could have that reading you know yeah 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 definitely so um we both loved this movie yeah uh, there's stuff I to pick in it to say. but I've been thinking about it so much yeah. since I've seen it I can't really stop and I really want to see it again I want to buy it, you yeah. know, when it comes out on DVD or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm glad it exists. It's like yeah, my I totally agree. of it, I, I suppose. think we should celebrate things like this that yeah. are creative and weird and left of centre. Yeah. Even if it has issues. Yeah. Like, I'd much prefer more films like this than run-of-the-mill shit that we've seen a hundred times. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for listening to the pre-post film review. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think of Snowpiercer, so you can shoot us an email at prepostfilmreview at gmail.com. That's right, you can. And uh, we'd also love it if you would give us a like on Facebook. Uh, it helps sort of um, spread a bit of exposure for the podcast. And uh, on that note, if you could subscribe on iTunes or um, Stitcher or any other uh, podcasting app or service that you use, uh, that would be amazing. That would be great. Um, and next episode, uh, we're going to be reviewing the new Marvel film, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. I did like the, I did like the protein bars in general. Like I like yeah. the sort of jelly, gelatinous like yeah. slab. Yeah. They, they had a good look to them, and they felt a bit gross. And yeah, slimy. felt like they tasted. In in my head, it was like disgusting licorice. Right, yeah, okay. Cause I, I, I mean, I hate licorice anyway, but it just looked like this disgusting off licorice. To me, it felt like it wouldn't have had any taste. It would just be like this just mush. tasteless, like, yeah. tough jelly. Yeah, I think you're um, right. <laughs> but anyway, John and Matt <laughs> speculate about weird pop toys. <laughs> um, 